This is 1994 Ford Escort and I'm going to show you all the quirks and features. Just kidding, I'm not going to copy Doug DeMuro. I'm just going to show you the Ford Escort that I've rented to explore Tenerife Island. And in this video I'll just briefly take a look at this car because it's in very poor condition. Uh, but my main argument is going to be that it's possible to get more fun with a very cheap rental car than a car that maybe costs 10 times more than this one. In terms of smiles per gallon or smiles per euro, this is almost unbeatable. And if you'd be interested in footage of point of view driving that I have already posted, then check it out here. I'll leave the link to it in the description. It will probably give you the best overview of how it is to drive this car with no music and with no talk, just pure sound and the video. So first of all, what proves my hypothesis that this car is more fun than a 10 times more costly car? I think we all can agree that the first car we've owned was the most important, it provided most emotions, and it doesn't matter that it probably was something cheap, easy to repair, and if we crash it then it didn't matter so much, but it still gave most emotions because there were first emotions of such kind. The first sense of freedom, being able to go on a journey with our friends and the next car just repeats the same emotions and human brain is just made in a way that all repetitive emotions wear off and are not that important and not that vivid. So in this case it was the first time I drove a cabrio as such. Surely if it was a Pagani Zonda Cabrio or something exotic, it would have been a more spectacular experience. But this still is an outstanding experience and will last as a bright memory. And of course it doesn't have to be a red Cabrio on an island. Just think about it yourself. What petrol heads dream do you have? Maybe it can be rented for a couple of weeks and it will provide all the sensations as if it belonged to you. Except for maintenance and worrying about resale value. Secondly is the financial aspect. Ownership, insurance, having roadworthiness tests and all sorts of expenses that are associated with owning a car add up. This particular car cost me about 16 euros per day. I think it is very difficult to beat. Basically the tip is that if you go to a place and you want to have a similar experience, it will probably cost a lot. A cabrio on an island like this will probably cost 100, 120 euros per day, at least it is this case with uh, Tenerife and those Fiat 127 Spider. And in a month it gathers up to more than a thousand. I don't know how much money is that, but it is a lot. So you actually have to prepare, save the money and only then you can have this experience. But this one is something that you can get. You can probably find such advertisement either in Facebook Marketplace or maybe there is a local homepage where you can buy and sell stuff. and probably you can find some locals who rent the car for a fraction of the cost. Another thing is that if you own a car, every squeak, every rattle is something that induces anxiety and you want to check out what that is. Is that another expensive repair? Do I have to take care of that? But if you don't own the car, it doesn't really matter. You just drive until it goes and that's it. You purely enjoy the experience without much worry. Another aspect that contributes to the experience, maybe even more than the car itself, is the context in which it is used. So you are maybe commuting to work in some major city, sitting in a traffic jam and the context in which this car is used is probably not that spectacular. Be it an M3 BMW or Ford Mustang, if it is in a traffic jam, it doesn't matter. It will not give this emotion. But this, it's like free Mustang that's released somewhere in the fields to run freely. It doesn't matter that it costs 1000 euros and it has many, many technical issues. It just gives these emotions. Speaking of Mustangs, Probably the next Ford I should get is the Ford Mustang. This is kind of a pony, the small wannabe Mustang. But it's red and it's cabrio and it's on a subtropical island. So that's cool.
But of course, all things are not great. It has a lot of problems. It might even be dangerous to be driven on public roads. It has a lot of maintenance overdue, maybe three, five times. Um, so let me show you around. Maybe it will be off-putting to you. All the problems, all the risks are on you. In this case, it is not a rental agency with some fancy insurances. So that is one of the drawbacks and you have to live with the small squeaks, rattles and problems that this car at this price range probably will have. So let's have a closer look at this car. So being a cabrio, it actually comes with quite a lot of extras that a usual Escort wouldn't have. It has all four power windows and surprisingly enough they all work except for this window which was smashed by some assholes who probably envied this guy for having a red cabrio uh, and it was a very difficult task finding a replacement mechanism for it unfortunately it is not properly repaired and also it is held in by some rubber bands Due to those, the window doesn't close properly and during the rain it wets the seat from the incoming moisture. But it's not really a design flaw of this car. It also has power mirrors. It still works. The sound is a bit odd. I think the glass itself is not original. The field of view is very narrow. So it's uh, it leaves quite a lot of blind space um, behind the car and I always turn the head to make sure there is no one on the uh, left lane when I'm doing a maneuver. Not really trusting these mirrors, but it works fine on both sides. Roof lowering system is also partially electronic. After unlatching it from both sides, electric motor will pull it down. Getting it back up again isn't assisted though, and requires some physical effort. Odometer shown mileage is 65,000 kilometers because it just doesn't have enough digits to go further than 100,000. Who knows how many times it has turned over. In any case, some visual defects must be forgiven. And the absence of radio isn't that big of a problem when you have a howling wheel bearing noise coming from the back and wind noise like this. Currently I'm driving at 120 km per hour, which is the speed limit, is completely legal, but in this car it feels like the end of the world. The rear bearing is louder than the wind noise and the engine noise and the, the steering is shaking, the wind is tearing apart, the soft top, so it feels very very extreme but it's actually a normal speed, it is a loud speed limit and with a normal car it would feel completely normal. And in front of me I have a possibility to jump and fulfill some sort of uh, mission. Maybe not this time. Also, once it started leaking fuel from the rear cap and I think it was kind of dripping down the piping that connects the gas tank to the filler cap and I figured I must park it so that it always has the nose down or at least on horizontal surfaces. Otherwise, I was driving feeling a bit of the gasoline smell in the car and it turned out that this whole thing is leaking. There is no shortage of sloping surfaces in Tenerife, in relation to which this car has another drawback, a very weak engine. Not only it pulls uphill very slowly, sometimes it struggles to do that altogether. Shit, it doesn't pull up, I have to go back and have some initial speed and try it once again. <laughs> it is just too weak to pull up this hill.
Also, I reviewed a Fiat 500, which is uh, about 40 euros per day. And it is a very modern car. It has no problems. It was almost brand new. And uh, it was a joy to drive, but it is very small. And uh, looking at this car, I thought it will be hopelessly impractical but actually it is a lot more practical than the fiat 500 it has four seats that can actually be used also the luggage space is enough for four large bags and nothing of that has to be carried in the interior so it is surprisingly spacious from the side it doesn't seem like it could carry four passengers with luggage especially considering that it is a cabrio it has to have some space for the mechanism but it manages that it has four normally usable seats also the trunk is large enough for four large bags so it kind of takes all the boxes it is perfect